Welcome to another Avid Chat. I'm David Harpel and Jack Arnold, as always, my cohort in crime here. How are you? Good. How are you doing? Doing good. So if you're just joining us for the first time, we pick a topic, we talk about it for a few minutes and send it out there for the you know world to discuss and share. Today, uh, the topic is going to be really focused around um, couples and relationships yes. and the way that they talk about money, the interaction they have. It's really right up our alley, Jack. I mean, it's, I would say uh, the majority of our clients are some sort of partnership. Correct. Yes. And a lot of times, like Melissa and I, my wife, we are kind of opposite. There's a little, there's a lot actually of difference of opinion on things. So talking about your finances, how to handle them is very common. So I would say we're pretty used to this as a team and that's why we like to work with couples. But specifically today, you uh, came across a tweet uh, yesterday or the other day that kind of hit home. And yep. so let's jump into it. Yes. Well, on X the other day, I thought this was an interesting question. This is, I think this is a common, uh, not a common question necessarily, but a common situation between uh, people in a relationship, couples, partners, married couples, spouse, whatever, working together. And this is a question, a uh, question for financial planners uh, for couples that have different values regarding money or tend to argue over it. Do you find it helpful for them to separate their finances? In other words, is it helpful, helpful for them to contribute equally, but from separate accounts? So, which I great thought was a, a great question and an interesting question. Um, and so did you respond? I did respond. My gen we could talk about this, obviously. My general response was um, what, what we typically find. My experience has been people that are arguing over money, but otherwise have a, a good relationship. Money is just like a sticking point between two people. If you have a terrible relationship with each other and money is just yet another thing that you're not getting along or not on the same page about, well, that's different. There's maybe there's yeah. other issues. There's, there's, you know, you have other relationship issues and money is just another front in the bat in the war uh, that you fight with each other. If you're just arguing about money and otherwise have a good relationship, uh, my experience has been that it's not a mechanical thing where it's like there's some kind of split accounts or, you know, this different technique. A lot of times it's just, it's a, it's a misunderstanding between two people, um, between what I'm actually trying to do and what I can actually verbalize to you that I want to do and being on the same page with those two things. And to your point, I think most of the time, you know, cruel fate is always opposite tract and you end up with somebody yeah. that compliments you in ways that are can be great but also be very frustrating at times because they have different views on things that you do in fundamental ways there's different people than you so until you can square those differences with each other and get on the same page and have a better understanding of where the other person's coming from no amount of different accounts or any kind of technique in terms of splitting things up is going to solve that because you'll still have these um disagreements with each other on big things on what to do so i just think i'd be getting on the same page with your spouse partner is the thing to do that's the first step and then the techniques are very do whatever you want to do after that you just have to figure out something that works so that you're on the same page but getting on the same page i think is the the first step so to summarize you're saying this is common it is common couples normally view things differently and they normally have a difficult time communicating, maybe articulating their yes. viewpoint on the money. So then what happens is if you and I are having a discussion and we feel strongly about something, there is no kind of mediator to the topic. So then it becomes somewhat of a tension type of conversation. And yep. ultimately you could say, I'm not talking about this anymore. <laughs> well, I'm just, yeah, right. I'm just yeah. done. Just whatever you want to do, Jack. Exactly. So that is normal. And I would say one of the processes that we can really help with is we are kind of the independent, you know, set of new ears. Sorry, what I'm hearing you say, Jack, is this. And what I'm hearing you say, David, is this. Have we heard you correctly? Yep, yep, that's right. Okay. So 
you kind of are on the same page. It's just, and then you start to talk about really what they're trying to do, which I would say normally gets back to as a cohesive unit, like you said earlier, if there's not major issues in the relationship, it might just be, we, let's just reset. What, what are we trying to do with all of our money? And then yeah. go from there. Yeah. I, my, I mean, in our experience, you know, normal, I maybe it's not the right to, in our experience and commonly it's people just, they think that they are on opposite ends of things. And a lot of times that what their values do actually overlap in terms of the things that they want to do. Maybe they disagree on small portions of it. There's fringe things that they really don't disagree, that they don't agree on really at all. But again, I, I have found that if people are in otherwise good relationships and they have you know some kind of you know, they can work together well on things i find that once the other person more understands where the other person's coming from and obviously vice versa the easier that they, they can be like oh well okay yeah yeah that's fine we, that, i can do that that's not a big deal i misunderstood you know i thought you know very common thing is one person will be a we got to save very diligent very yeah. almost frugal super saver type and the other will be the person that's like YOLO. You can't take it with you. You got um, it to spend you, you, it. Yeah. And I'm, there's no, uh, both of those things, there's value in both of those things. Maybe one just needs to go a little bit the other way and one a little bit the other way. And I have found in our experience that that's not that big of a deal. Once people understand that this is one, this is kind of what each other's thinking. Here's a way that you can mix those two things into what you're trying to do. I find that most people are usually good with it. Now, sometimes mm -hmm. it takes some reminders. You know, you have to come back and remind yourselves that this is what we're trying to do and get back on the same page. But it's doable. And to go back to the original question, the simple thing would be just do separate accounts, problem solved. My experience, it doesn't solve the problem that no. because the, the separate accounts, having everything in one account or separate accounts is not the issue. It's we're just not on the same page. Well, and I think a lot of what we've experienced with clients and walking them through kind of this, let's help you create this vision, what you're trying to accomplish, working together. And then when you get back into, OK, how can we start to take action? A lot of times there are there's accounts all over the place and mm -hmm. that lends to just confusion. And a lot of times we will help people whittle those down to what's really necessary to accomplish what we say, your, your purpose-driven money system. How do you have money flowing in the right directions together and simple so you're not trying to track all these different accounts? And a lot of times it does end up maybe some sort of kind of joint hub account. And then for little frivolous spending, a lot of times people will just say, all right, well, I want to spend 500 bucks a month and I don't want to think about it and you spend 500 a month and you don't think about it and maybe you have separate accounts for that but as long as you don't have six seven eight nine accounts i think that does in other words more accounts does tend to add to the confusion which then might turn into some sort of uneasiness in conversation yeah there's also that's a good point one, a lot of times you're talking about things that are intangible. One, it's like numbers. Two, it can be like values and the things that you want to, the things that aren't so easily one to articulate or uh, describe in terms of numbers. It's You can't just, sometimes it's difficult to talk through numbers. So it's easier just to write things down. So it has some kind of visual aid to see what's going on. So it's one, it's hard to communicate, period. It's just, regardless of who you're communicating with, it's just hard to communicate it amongst different people when you're talking about numbers and kind of intangible things that's difficult to do second yes the more complicated it's even more difficult the more if you've right. got well a little bit goes here and then this goes here and then i do a little bit of this and then I, it's like what is even going on it's that it, there's just things moving all over the place and it's hard for again a lot of times you'll end up having one person who does the money i guess they kind of yep. pay the bills blah blah and then one who that is kind of just hears about it you know there's yeah, always kind of the, with it. yeah there's always kind of the cfo accountant of the family usually that's doing those things so this person the one that's doing it is trying to explain to the person that's not doing it and the other person that's not doing it feels like i don't know what's going on and i you can't really explain it to me i'm feeling like this is what's going on but i don't really yeah. know and then again it's just like one of these things it's just a lack of the communication and understanding between yeah two people that's like 
what's behind the big curtain, the Oz. It's unknown. I just know I just spend the money. I don't know. You know yeah. Mr. X or Mrs. X is the one that actually makes it all work and puts it in the account. I just, and that sometimes that kind of aloofness, but just a, an awareness might actually give a little bit of uneasiness to the, the CFO type of the person, the one that's crunching the numbers, so to speak, or keeping track of it. Yeah. Um, so it, it all comes back to, as we always say, the values, what are you trying to accomplish, but also having an open dialogue and a good, healthy relationship, we would say, is not to avoid the money talk. It's actually to get it out there and talk about how you feel about it and the impact that it has, and then try to put together a system that gives you less anxiety and actually more excitement about the money that you spend and save together. And right. to, to your other point earlier, there's no right or wrong. This is the beauty of uh, partnerships and couples is you, you figure this out together and go from there. Right. And really we're, if, if having two people, you know, working together towards something like it, it's one of those things where like, it could just be rocket fuel to what you're trying to accomplish. It can be your greatest advantage. It can also be your biggest detractor. If it's, if you're not on the yeah. same page, it can just make things much more difficult and if you can just get on the same page, it, you really just like a rocket ship trying to get to where you're going. As long as you can be on the same, this is true, whether it's just like, you know, personal relationships, but also business relationships. Uh, yep. And it, you just have to be on the same page and know who, what, who is each other's role? Where are we going? So that I know what I need to do. You, I know what you're doing. We're both on the same page and it can really take off. If you're opposite directions, you're just not going to get anywhere. Again, yes. regardless of how you move things around and how you have it set up, it doesn't matter. You're pulling in opposite directions. So I would say that's step one. Right. I, I don't know why, but I need immediately thought of like the rowers out there and you've got like, you know, it just looks like perfect synchrony, you know, yes. somebody's doing the left, somebody's doing the right, and they are just hammering straight away. If they weren't doing that, on the opposites kind of attracting to pull together in the same force, they'd be doing circles and they'd be all over the place and they wouldn't go anywhere. Exactly. If one person's rowing one way, the other person's rowing the other <laughs> way. Well, I don't care how strong you are. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> like, it's, yeah, you got to be pushing the same direction. Yes, exactly. So, yeah. yeah Always a you just, fun time. Right. Being in a canoe when we camp, trying to steer the back of the boat when the person in the front's doing something different. Yeah, under right. The bushes. <laughs> exactly. So I think it's a great topic. Like we've said a couple of times now, this is very common. So if you're feeling any of this, you're running into this, I mean, we love to chat about it. That's why we do these things. Uh, reach out. I don't I don't have any other final thoughts unless you do, Jack. No, I think that's really it. I mean, you know, we're saying get on the same page, which it can prove to be a little bit difficult, but I don't think it's sometimes as difficult as you would expect it to be just based on how sometimes contentious it can be. It's just like you said, just open communications. Here's what I'm trying to do. If you need to get a third party involved, whether that's you do have an advisor of some sort, or you just have like a friend or you somebody that will be kind of the in between third party. I find that that helps. So, but otherwise, yeah. I think just getting on the same page is uh, the point. Agree 100%. Well, thanks for joining us today. Look forward to another chat, and I'll see you soon. All right, see you.